Hello friends, I am NK Jain from Skill on Tech. Today I am coming with another video on bearing inspection during operation. Bearing defects. You can see some pictures of bearing defects. Flacking. Flacking one side of raceway abnormal axial load rolling fatigue is the reason for flacking of the bearing. You can see a picture of a flacking here. Where you can see this is a flacking of the bearing. A scoring a scoring or a smearing between raceway and rolling surface raceway rings not parallel excessive speed is the reason insufficient lubrication lubrication is the reason for scoring cracks excessive shock load you can see these are the cracks in the bearing indentation shock load this may be due to shock load abnormal wear Fretting, creep, etc. Seizure. You can see jamming of the bearing. Discoloration and belting raceway. Insufficient clearance. Incorrect lubrication. Incorrect mountings are the region of seizure of the bearing. You can see a picture here. Seizure of bearing will give you this kind of appearance. Electric burning. So this is electric burning. Here you can see. So this comes due to fluting or corrugation due to electric arcing installed ground wire. This may come electric burning. Rust and corrosion is in the bearing is a very common phenomena. This may be due to water content in the oil. So these are the some important de bearing defects which may occur and the reasons already explained. So accordingly a corrective action shall be taken to avoid the bearing defects. Inspection during operation. We have to carry out inspection of bearing during operation to assess the condition of bearing. Bearings are a vital component in any machine with rotating parts and should be monitored closely. Early indication of bearing damage allowed. Bearing to be replaced during regularly scheduled maintenance. Avoiding otherwise costly unscheduled machine due to downtime due to bearing failure. Important parameters for measuring machine condition to achieve optimum bearing performance are noise, temperature, and vibration. So, the noise, temperature, and vibrations are the indications which will tell us that how bearing is performing and how it will last. When to take measurement? The best time to take vibration measurement is when the machine is operating under normal condition. When the bearings have reached their normal operating temperature and machine speed is within specification. For variable speed machines, measurement should always be taken at the same point in the process cycle. For comparison purpose, the location and type of measurement as well as the operating condition should be identical each time a measurement is taken. You can see a picture where this vibration measurement is taken by a person. Bearing inspection and lubrication. Predictive and proactive inspection of rotating equipment with an instrument such as ultra probe has many advantages. So by the use of ultra probe, we can carry out predictive and proactive inspection of bearings. An ultrasound bearing inspection provide early warning of bearing failure, detection, a lack of lubrication, preventing over lubrication. Nowadays advanced softwares are available to assist you for your work process and analyze very efficiently the bearing condition. Remote and online monitoring can also be done with permanent mounted ultrasonic sensors that will monitor the condition of bearing 24-7 and they will give you alarms. Avoid over lubrication of the bearing and lack of lubrication. 60 to 80 percent of bearings failures are lubrication related problems. Identify a lack of lubrication and prevent over lubrication. 
so these ultra probes which are available will give you help to determine the condition of your bearing bearing failure process you can see a picture where it is shown clearly how a new bearing fail in their entire life so you can see in this picture there are three domains this is a proactive domain this is a predictive domain and this is a fault domain so in proactive domain you can see if bearing is running smooth and we have installed a new bearing here then the after running of certain hours you might see a start of failure of bearing comes at point p the sound of the bearing at point p1 you will listen it is a structure born ultrasound will give you a indication of a bearing noise so in the predict predictive domain you can carry out predictive maintenance of the bearing by monitoring sound of the bearing vibrations at point p2 you will they will start increasing oil analysis we can do by ferrographic analysis wear particle analysis condition of oil can be assessed by infrared we can measure the temperature of the bearing so with these all these are the early warning of bearing failures and we can take predictive actions in this predictive domain to increase the life of bearing but these cares are not taken during this zone then the audible noise will increase the temperature of bearing will increase at point p6 in the fault domain this is a fault domain because now bearing is under fault you will see the vibrations of the bearings are increased temperature of the bearing is increasing the noise of the bearing is now different so finally the bearing failure comes at point f so this is a bearing failure process so we can enhance the life of bearing by carrying out early predictive actions by condition monitoring of the bearing so let us see how we can inspect our bearing one by one by monitoring noise nowadays electronic stethoscopes are available you can see a picture of electronic stethoscope a common way to identify an irregularity in bearing performance is by listening bearing that are in good condition produce a soft purring noise grinding squeaking and other irregular sounds usually indicate that bearing are in a poor condition or that something is wrong the broad range of sound produced by machines also include ultrasonic short wave component that are extremely directional in nature instruments such as ultrasonic probes isolate these airborne ultrasounds from the background plant and machinery noises and pinpoint the source another popular instrument for identifying troublesome machine parts or damaged bearing track traces and diagnose the source of oil kind of machinery noise to confirm that bearing has been mounted correctly perform a rotation check of the bearing before taking machine into operation the next part is monitoring temperature you can see thermometer temperature sensors bearing operating temperature shall be monitored at all positions because it will give you a indication the deterioration of bearing if temperature of bearing is increasing means bearing will damage as soon as possible if the operating conditions have not been changed increase in temperature is indication of imminent bearing damage however keep in mind that a natural temperature rise 
lasting one or two days normally occurs immediately after bearing lubrication and each re-lubrication. Contact thermometers and non-contact thermometers can be used to measure temperatures. Non-contact are useful where access is difficult or hazardous. Infrared thermometers now available. Thermal imagers and thermal camera use infrared to see thermal anomalies or hot spots. Infrared thermal inspection can reveal potential problems and pinpoint problems with areas without interrupting production, without shutting off machine. In application where the inner ring rotates, the bearing housing is typically 5 degree centigrade cooler than the bearing outer ring and 10 degree centigrade cooler than the bearing inner ring. So, we have to monitor the temperature of the bearing in condition monitoring schedules during predictive maintenance. The next important part of a bearing is a lubrication. Monitoring lubrication conditions. Bearing can only achieve maximum performances level with adequate lubrication. The extra lubrication or lack of lubrication will reduce life of bearing. The lubrication condition of a bearing should therefore be monitored closely. The condition of the lubricant itself should also be periodically assessed. The best way to do this is to take a few samples typically from different areas and have them analyzed. Monitoring the condition of the oil for example offers the opportunity to extend the interval between oil changes with subsequent savings in oil consumption and reduce machinery downtime. Check the areas surrounding the bearing positions for lubrication. Keep proactive collars and labyrinth seals filled with grease for maximum protection. Check that automatic lubrication system are functioning properly and providing the appropriate amount of lubrication to the bearing. Check the lubricant level in sums and reservoirs and replenish as necessary. Re-lubrication bearing with grease where and when applicable. Rubber seals are designed to permit a small amount of lubrication leakage to lubricate the seal counterface. Ferrographic analysis prevent catastrophic equipment failure through timely and accurate prediction of wear particle analysis and lubricating oil of critical machines. Therefore, all critical machines oil wear particle analysis shall be carried out time to time as per predictive maintenance schedule. Taking vibration measurements. Vibration is a clear indication of bearing condition. Once bearing damage starts, your machine vibrations will increase. So, vibration measurement should be taken in three different directions at each bearing positions on a machine. Horizontal measurement typically show more vibration than vertical measurement because a machine is usually more flexible in the horizontal plane. Imbalance for example produces a radial vibration that is a part vertical and part horizontal. Excessive Horizontal vibration is often a good indicator of imbalance. Axial measurement typically show little vibrations but it, if present often indicate misalignment and or a bent shaft. So let us see what are the important vibration measurement points. You can see in the prime mover here this is a non-drive and axial this is a non-drive and horizontal point and this is a non-drive and vertical vibration measurement. Here it is a drive and vertical and this is a drive and horizontal measurement point and this is a drive and axial measurement point. So these are the important points. So we should take vibration measurements as per the point shown in the sketch. Similarly, in the driven machine, our compressor or pump, similarly, the bearing vib vibration shall be 
monitored and recorded after recording the vibration levels they shall be compared with the previous vibrations and shall be analyzed how vibration levels are in an increasing trend and what they are indicating so accordingly the proactive measures should, shall be taken to rectify the problem in the machine inspection during a machine shutdown when a machine is not operating when your plant is under shutdown and machine is also under shutdown then we can take inspection of the bearings when a machine is not operating it is an opportunity to assess the condition of bearing seals housing seal counter faces and lubricant a general inspection can often be done by removing a housing cover or cap for a more detailed inspection the bearing first need to be cleaned if a bearing appears to be damaged it should be dismounted and thoroughly inspected shaft and belt alignment as well as a thorough inspection of the machine foundation and exterior can also be done during a machine shutdown any condition whether it is a missing shim or a deteriorating foundation can negatively affect machine operation the sooner any problem is identified the sooner corrective action can be taken so during shutdown all bearing shall be inspected and as per condition of the bearing the action shall be initiated for replacement of the bearing thanks for watching the video if you like this video hit like button below share it with your friends and colleagues subscribe our channel for getting updates on upcoming videos please leave any comments feedback to improve the videos thank you